every Monday to Friday. This is Peter Lewis's Money Talk. Money Talk. Good morning and welcome to a brand new week of Money Talk. It's Monday the 12th of June. I'm Peter Lewis and thank you for making this podcast one of the most listened to finance and investment podcasts in Hong Kong. In today's business and finance headlines... Consumer price inflation remained close to zero in China and factory gate deflation deepened, plunging by the most in seven years. China's annual consumer price inflation rates edged up 0.2% in May from April's 26-month low of 0.1%. China's factory gate deflation deepened. Producer prices, which measure the price of raw materials and goods leaving factories, fell 4.6% compared with a 3.6% drop in April. It was the eighth straight month of producer deflation and the steepest fall since February 2016. I'm joined now by Shanghai-based independent economist Andy Sher. Morning, Andy. Good morning, Peter. Um, Let me get your thoughts, first of all, on this uh, inflation data that we had out of the mainland on uh, Friday. Consumer price inflation, it's pretty close to zero, isn't it? And producer prices um, are in deflation. What is this telling you about the state of the mainland economy? Well, uh, I, I think that the issue is uh, China has uh, uh, experience, uh, always has uh, over overcapacity. So uh, now our well, commodity prices uh, uh, have come down a bit. So I think that uh, the, uh, we have uh, this uh, price adjustment. And uh, obviously the property sector is deflating and that has a knock-on effect. So I, I, I think that uh, it's not necessarily deflation in the sense that money supply is contracting. M2 is growing, still growing at, at 12%. So I'm, I'm not sure that that is the case. It's really about the some of the quirks in the real economy. So is, is it a concern? Should we be worried um, when you see producer price deflation? Or uh, as you're saying here, it's not because of money supply. Um, it's because of other sort of, if you like, structural factors in the economy. Yeah, there, there is a global demand issue, right? Uh, exports are down in, in, uh, in May. And uh, China uh, really expanded the production capacity during the pandemic uh, when businesses uh, didn't have a, a lot to do and they focused on upgrading to uh, so-called 5G and AI-assisted manufacturing. And that really massively expanded the production capacity. Mm. So uh, in, uh, uh, the... Uh, 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 and China really wants to supply to the whole world, and uh, the, uh, but uh, we we have uh, demand uh, cooling down because people in the West are not getting helicopter money from their governments anymore, and they overordered the electronics during the pandemic, and half of China's exports are electronics, so we do have a. Uh, 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 some sort of a, a downturn here. So, so what is it then that's going to um, pr- prompt the, the Chinese economy into growing? If exports to the rest of the world are slowing because the global economy is slowing, if consumer depart- demand on the mainland is, is weak, the property de- um, sector still hasn't recovered, where is the growth going to come from? Well, I think China's focus is not on growth anymore. It's just uh, you, you, you lived there. What, what, what's the harm, right? So, uh, uh, you know, the labor market is uh, it's very tight and uh, college graduates cannot find uh, good white collar jobs, uh, which uh, 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 that problem cannot be solved by growth. China's growth is driven mm-hmm. by manufacturing and the construction. That, they, that don't create a lot of white collar jobs. So, in in the, in the sense that uh, China, uh, uh, what China should do is uh, really restructuring, balancing the economy, don't invest so much, and shift the money to the household sector to create uh, to to boost consumption, which the, the government doesn't like to do. So, mm. uh, so what we're going to see is uh, Chinese exports would uh, would become cheaper. And uh, and then uh, uh, a lot of business elsewhere will go under. So mm. uh, China, China's exports will expand the market this year. So the global economy needs to go through this kind of adjustment and, uh, and the more demand for Chinese goods. So does that mean then that people are going to be disappointed if they're expecting stimulus, if the focus is not going to be on growth, um, but it's going to be on restructuring, then there isn't really the need for things like triple R cuts or interest rate cuts, is there? No, they, they never worked before. Yeah, I think uh, you, uh, monetary policy used to uh, kind of fuel property speculation. Mm. Uh, and uh, there is, I believe, a political decision not to do that anymore. 
uh, the property sector is basically done, and it, it's on its own. So uh, I, I think the uh, the economy is going to be very slow. We do have a, a, a bounce in the service sector, uh, probably seven to eight percent, and the manufacturing so far is still growing. It's it's a slowly. Is still growing, so uh, uh, so but you, you end of the year with a, with uh, a low uh, at the low end you have uh, maybe a five percent at the high, at the top end you have six percent growth rate. So it, it's not good for uh, after three years of a uh, pandemic, and so it means a week. So next year there will be a bigger challenge. There is no low base effect anymore. So mm-hmm. I think that the government is going to take it easy this year. Maybe next year they'll think of something. Well, then um, equity analysts are going to be pretty disappointed, aren't they? Because they are almost unanimous in calling for more stimulus in the form of rate cuts, triple R cuts. And, um, you know, most analysts were been pretty wrong on the Chinese markets. If you go back to the beginning of the year, they had pretty optimistic forecasts. And instead, we've seen the MSCI China down almost uh, 20 percent. Sounds like they're going to be disappointed further. Yeah, we, we had uh, this massive rally uh, in uh, 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 in the last quarter of last year, and uh, that was not based on fundamentals. Uh, and it was uh, so. What, what we're seeing is that uh, uh, handing back that uh, that uh, that increase. So, uh, uh, no, but I, I I think the issue with the Chinese stock market it has never been economic growth. Mm. It's the overcapacity, excessive competition. So you look at the Chinese stock market over the last twenty uh, twenty years. Uh, it hasn't done much, but uh, the economy is up ten times. So mm. uh, the issue is uh, is really about uh, the structure of the economy that does not favor return on capital. So if if it and it doesn't favor really shareholder rights, does it either, or, or shareholder returns? There isn't really a focus on that um, at all. The, the central government, I don't think, likes the idea at all of returning profits um, to shareholders or doing share buybacks or increasing dividends. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, obviously, from the government's perspective, its goal is uh, uh, make the country rich and strong, and uh, and uh, it's not about making shareholders uh, rich. And uh, that apparently is East Asian story. You look at what happened in Japan; uh, the people investing Japanese stock market over uh, this spectacular uh, increase from nineteen uh, fifties over the last uh, over, over the next half a century, and basically didn't make a lot of money. So, uh, and uh, you look at uh, Taiwan, you look at uh, Korea, East Asian model, because that it's got, they, uh, they have high savings rates. They have savings. Mm. They like to mobilize savings to, to boost up uh, production capacity. That means that there's, uh, there's uh, overcapacity, a lot of competition. Return on capital is not great. So what do you make of the support measures that the government has, has recently announced, getting state banks to cut their rates on deposits? It's also coming up with support measures for the property markets. Do you think they're going to work? Are they going to be any better than that 15-point plan that they had back in November? Oh, from the, in, in, terms of, for the, in terms of the deposit rate, Chinese households want to pay down their debts early. Mm. So you, you cut the deposit rates, they, they have more incentives to do that. They, will not, they don't have a lot of incentives to go out to spend money because mm. they did not make money during the three years of pandemic and they need to reaccumulate. So this is uh, something you cannot overcome. You, or if to stimulate consumption, you must uh, boost their disposable income by cutting taxes, maybe cutting all these contributions to so-called social welfare funds. Okay, So uh, these welfare funds account for half of the labor cost. You look at the the big thing, not the little thing like a deposit rate. So mm. I don't think it's it's it has big impact. In so, terms of the property sector, it's it's really oversupply. There's not much you can do. It's the oversupply is overwhelming. Ten billion square meters under construction. Seven in uh, in the, the in the residential sector, and the 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 the, the commercial and office mar- uh, sector is uh, basically collapsing. Mm. And there's a lot of debt over there. You know, you know, so uh, it's a pretty serious crisis. And the household sector does not really, like uh, in Chinese households, don't dump their properties. They held on, uh, wishing that the price would come back. So the, the market does not adjust uh, r- rapidly. But there is a, a full-on full uh, uh, crisis in the commercial sector. 
So if you need to boost um, household savings, household income, would consumption vouchers work in the way that we've seen them in Hong Kong? Mm. Uh, yeah, much, uh, the Chinese government doesn't like to give out the cash. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we saw that the, the, the local governments gave out some consumption vouchers, really tiny, very tiny little. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's uh, really for publicity. So Chinese government like wants money. You look at most local governments now, uh, really short of money because uh, they couldn't sell land like before. Mm. So uh, uh, most governments are in 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 uh, in, uh, in 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 financial some kind of financial uh, distress. The only way, uh, if you want to improve the situation, the central government has to issue bonds to sell to the household sector at a high interest rate, high interest rate. Then people, instead of paying down the debts, they will buy your bonds. Then you maybe you can you you spend that money. Uh, to maybe uh, prop up some local governments that mm. are basically going under. Where does Hong Kong fit in? Where does the economy here fit in? Sort of caught between China, which is uh, weakening, and, and the West, which is also seeing a slowdown in demand. So what does this mean for the Hong Kong economy? The first thing is Hong Kong does not have a, a, uh, an interpen- independent, uh, independent international economy, not like uh, Taiwan or Singapore. Yeah, Hong Kong, everything is about the mainland. So, uh, so, uh, so forget about talking about Hong Kong as an international financial center. It's, so this is, uh, uh, just around the, uh, the, and the other is, uh, that, but uh, the, the problem with Hong Kong is that, uh, Hong Kong, uh, 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 ben- uh basically was doing two things for many years. One was uh, raising money for the, uh, the, 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 the Chinese, for Chinese companies and, uh, and also kind of uh, getting money from China for like kind of, uh, uh speculation, whatever. So the, these things boosted the financial sector and also Chinese money coming to buy properties. So uh, on the monetary side, uh, that, 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 and if Hong Kong is booming or whatever, whatever you're talking about these three things. Or the other is that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the tourism sector, Chinese uh, wanted to buy luxury goods and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Ch- uh, uh, mainland imposes a 25% tax on the luxury goods. So Hong Kong uh, uh, is an arbitrage place and, uh, and uh, Chinese went there uh, to, to buy luxury goods. But uh, the, 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 this part is really going down because the Chinese, after three years of a pandemic, people really uh, have changed their priority. They don't want to buy a, an LV bag, for spend $10,000 to buy an LV bag and stay in a terrible hotel and eat, eat instant noodle. You know, that, that, that thing is over. Mm. Now, so they, now they're going to Thailand and Malaysia uh, for a good time. You pay a little bit of money for, uh, to have a very good hotel room. You have beach, you have nice people, nice food, nice weather. And you, if you come to Hong Kong today, before you come, they double or triple the hotel rates. <laughs> and yes. the hotel, hotel rooms are terrible, terrible, terrible. So, uh, <laughs> and then the people in China, in, in the mainland are not used to it because the housing condition or hotels are much better than in Hong Kong. Mm. So this, this is the problem that Hong Kong doesn't have much to offer other than shopping. When people don't want to want to uh, uh, do shopping like before, so then Hong Kong is basically is is, is dead. So Hong Kong's economy is is uh, is not is going nowhere. And mm. and uh, not, not that you want to uh, uh, reinvent itself. If you want to pivot to technology. They want to uh, kind of uh, inv- uh, create these uh, tech research centers. I, I think that, to me, is laughable that Hong Kong will become a technology center. And why do you say that? You you think it's too late? For, is it too late for it to maybe... No, no, Hong Kong, is, uh, Hong Kong culture is very short term. Mm. It's all about a speculation. The, the reason why Hong Kong is where it is is because of that. Mm. Because everything is about a speculation. And mm. it, everything is about uh, sucking money in to boost the property market price. Mm. So then uh, the money percolates down into the Hong Kong eco- economy, but into the Hong Kong, Hong, Hong Kong household sector. And of course, the other thing is Hong Kong's in, um, led by US monetary policy. It's tied th- uh, to that through the peg. Now, you say that the, uh, the Hong Kong currency pegged to the dollar is not sustainable. Why do you say that? Yeah, the, the reason is because uh, uh, that, uh, Hong Kong does not have an inter- independent international economy. It's just part of the mainland, uh, and, and, and it makes a living by arbitraging its special status, i.e. low taxes. 
Okay, so uh, so uh, having a separate currency is is uh, uh, is not sustainable, and uh, of course, so far it's still hang on because the Chinese uh, RMB is has at least dirty float is is kind of linked to the dollar. But the issue going you looking forward, the dollar is not a stable currency because the U.S. has this vast fiscal deficit. Uh, this even though the economy is not in a bad shape. And uh, it's a structural issue. The, so the U.S. fiscal deficit uh, uh, will be bigger and bigger. So 10% of GDP fiscal deficit is going to be a routine thing. You cannot expect this currency to be stable. So, so are- this is where... This is where that Hong Kong, uh, this, uh, this peg will become a uh, negative for the Hong Kong's economy. So are you saying that um, what Hong Kong should do is it should abandon the US dollar peg and peg the currency to the yuan? Or no, are you saying no. that Hong what Kong should happen is should have the Chinese Hong yuan? Hong Kong should not have its own dependent currency okay. at all. So you're not Hong saying Hong we peg it. Just adopt the RMB. Yep. And RMB, once it leaves the border, is convertible. Mm. So you don't have conver- convertibility issue. But it's not and, uh, convertible uh, now, then, though, is it? It's not convertible yeah, now. That's the problem. It, it's not convertible inside China. It's convertible in Hong Kong. There's this offshore IMB component. Any IMB that goes uh, uh, exits the border is convertible. Mm. There is this, this architecture of in, uh, offshore IMB that uh, can banks can transmit uh, can uh, can send to each other as a convertible currency. Mm. And the, the China Central Bank has this offshore RMB uh, exchange rate, which can be a little bit different from on, onshore, but, but because of the foreign exchange reserves are still very vast, they can maintain the parity. Mm. So, uh, so it's not 100% safe, but uh, considering Hong Kong, China's foreign exchange reserves, uh, they have the ability to, to, to keep it. So, so you, you have the convertibility and you have the RMB. Uh, stability. So, so going forward, you you have the benefit from both sides, and and also that a uh, global demand for RMB asset is growing. So, uh, uh, and RMB interest rate is is lower. So uh, uh, now suddenly, Hong Kong assets all become RMB assets. And when the central banks, uh, like uh, in the Middle East or in East Asia, when they want to ex- increase RMB exposure, and then Hong Kong is a natural place to to go to. So Hong Kong becomes effectively an international RMB center, and it's it's it's, it's it can ride this this trend and uh, and have a second life. So I I think this is really the second. Uh, uh, this is really uh, uh, an opportunity for Hong Kong to reinvent itself. Itself. Pivoting to technology is just uh, kind of uh, burning some money uh, and uh, to 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 uh, to, uh, to have hope, right? To mm. buy hope. So uh, so this is something real, and it's, it's it fits into Hong Kong strength. Hong Kong people like like to speculate, like to move money around. And here's another here's your chance mm. that uh, that RMB becomes international, and you try to uh, kind of. Uh, uh, a f- a flock this to uh, to 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 foreigners to somebody from the Middle East or whatever. No, you 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 have a you have a you can you can do this job and and make yourself rich too. So just to be clear, then what you're saying, you're not saying that the peg is going to be broken through some speculative attack because there have been some funds who have been calling for that and they've been badly burned when they try it. What you're saying is that Hong Kong should voluntarily um, abandon that peg and adopt the, uh, the, the adopt the Chinese yuan as the as its currency. That's right. And it's, uh, in terms of attacking Hong Kong dollar. You know, uh, <clears throat> Uh, it's like uh, when the big shot in 19, uh, 1997 uh, in, in November on his private jet, you know, this big uh, macro fund guy and uh, called me, said, uh, do you think Hong Kong dollar should devalue? I said, yes. He said, do you think Hong Kong dollar, dollar will devalue? I said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so basically, uh, and he didn't listen to me. He lost a lot of money, lost more money than anybody else in this attack mm. on Hong Kong dollar. The, the issue is that uh, Hong Kong can let the interest rise. So, uh, <clears throat> so it, it, it's, 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 uh, and after this attack, Hong Kong has really tightened up its, uh, its, uh, bond, uh, its banking system. It's not so easy to borrow Hong Kong dollars anymore. Right, so you look at Hong Kong dollars balance in the uh, cash balance in the banking system is tiny. 
it's tiny. If a, if a, 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 a hedge fund really want, can borrow that money, the interest rate will go through the roof. And that's another vulnerability of uh, the peg right now. Because the Hong Kong interest rate is lower than the US dollar interest rate, you either have to burn the foreign exchange reserves or you let the, the cash balance to go down. Mm. And then right now, it's the latter. That means that it's really vulnerable to, uh, uh, to a, a spike in interest rate. And think mm. about how vulnerable Hong Kong's property market is. And if that's everything for Hong Kong people. Mm. Well, Andy, so uh, uh, the Hong Kong market, the dollar, uh, property market could, could collapse. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's fascinating to hear this. I'd love to talk longer um, uh, about this with you, but uh, we've already had quite a long discussion and uh, we're running out of time, sadly. <laughs> but it's great talking to you, Andy, and hearing your thoughts on this. Yes, have a good day, Peter. Thank you, Andy. That's Shanghai-based independent economist, Andy Sher. See you tomorrow. Money Talk.